Okay, okay, you've heard it. We are back. When you just when you thought it was over and you would never see us again, we are back. The Hot Seat Radio Show with me, and Sean Fortine, and Donovan Sadiq, and we we are going to talk about a lot of stuff that's going on in the city of Moreno Valley as well as what's going on in Inland Empire. Please tune in to the new Inland Empire Informer, uh, the Donovan Sadiq Show. Uh, Pastor Don's devotional, and you can get all this stuff on YouTube and Facebook or just messages here, and we will let you know what's going on. We are in Edgemont Studios in Edgemont, California, so it is cold out there, so we removed locations, but we will still be out and about, and we're going to talk about a lot of stuff happening in the city of Moreno Valley. So, me and Sean, for time, how, how was your Thanksgiving? It was all right. I mean, uh, any, you know, how how'd you like those Dallas Cowboys? That, that was excellent. I didn't. I, you I, mean, I, I don't follow <laughs> you know, football in most sports. That's America's team. Matter of fact, I think that should be Moreno Valley's team as well. So you know, well, I think our our team would be more the uh, Steelers because we're it was a big dark cloud surrounding mm-hmm. Moreno Valley right yeah. now. But uh, yeah, it was a great weekend. Uh, Christmas is coming up. It's it's cold. Snow is on the mountains. Uh, a lot of great things going on. Other than the election, Sean, what is your take? on where we're going to go. December 6th is the swearing-in ceremony. Do you think Victoria Baca is going to bring her Hispanic pastor to swear her hen in the Espanol language? Probably. Probably, like she did last time. Yeah, I think, uh, well, English is uh, the language that you're, that you're required to learn to speak as an American citizen. So if she's not... Addressing Americans, American citizens first, that really makes her priorities look rather suspicious. Right. And she has, well, she has a history of race baiting anyways. Right. And she only cares about the Hispanic community anyways. So right. that's not I, surprising. Well, I, you know, I don't know if she cares about the Hispanic community because she hasn't done a damn thing over here in Edgemont. So, I mean, this is the real Hispanic community. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, that's just things that she's saying. All, real, all, functionally, all she does is she, all she cares about is. East end of the city. All she, right. she's well. She does what her employer tells her to yeah, do. Yeah, if so. Edgemont wants uh, wants someone to look after District Three, they got the right person. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. So I mean, uh, you know, it's been a couple of weeks, and now we're back. We're going to be, uh, we're going to get back into the groove, and we, you know, we're going to take a break during the uh, Christmas and New Year's ho- uh, holiday, but we're going to hit hit it wherever we can. Now that there's no more constraints, I'm not a candidate. We have nothing else to do but inform the electorate and those that want to know what's going on in the city of Moreno Valley. And again, uh, somebody came to me the other day talking about the homeless issue. And Mm -hmm. me and Pastor Dom were talking about that as well. So we're going to be talking about things like that, where you can go to get uh, help. I was very surprised Mm -hmm. that Highland Fairview did not provide any turkeys for Thanksgiving. I was asking all around, where can I get a Highland Fairview turkey? Yeah, really. I heard they were going to start another food drive, but... uh... I guess not. I guess not. Not this year. The damage. I guess they don't done. want. I guess uh, uh, Highland Fairview doesn't want anything specific yet. Yeah, not not yet. Yeah, the once once they want once once they're after something, the food drives will be back again, and right. so they can flood Drum the up. flood the city hall with the poor migrants that. Uh, well, quite frankly, there people are just loyal to their stomachs. They don't care about the warehouses. Right. They that, care about the free food. If right. I if I had a better. Uh, if I provided a better meal for them, they'd uh, come support whatever I want. Right, right. Now, you know, I, I, you know what? I, I don't even think he's going to do that. Now that he's got a super majority, he doesn't even need to do that because nothing's going to. He's not going to let anything come to the voter. Mm-hmm. And uh, now that Gutierrez has won, the word on the street is they're going to appoint uh, a Benvizi. Mm-hmm. A supporter to occupy that seat, and I would think yeah. that would be Raymond Sawyer. Would that be somebody to look for? I don't know. He's got a bunch of stooges. bunch of the stooges that are over there. So yeah, but the one thing he he uh, has done in the past and uh, will still need to do is uh, to make it look like the community is uh, supporting, supporting it. That's what he's always done, mm-hmm. and he's done a very good job of using like uh, Latin American style communist propaganda mm-hmm. techniques to make people feel like uh, if you're not on the bad bandwagon, there's something wrong with you. And right, right. I mean, luckily. 
Luckily, I don't really care if I stand alone. Otherwise, it would have been pretty awkward to go to some of those meetings. Yeah, I mean, it, it, exactly, exactly. So, uh, so uh, we got that going on. Again, if you guys are interested, please uh, share and like uh, the cast, and we want to hear what you guys got to say. We're gonna uh, start doing the. Um, we got a lot of stuff coming up. So when people yeah. thought that we had totally disappeared because the election is over, you are totally mistaken because we have retooled and we are going to get ready because we have four years, really two years for the mayor elections. But we got four years as these candidates are starting to switch up mm-hmm. and to watch what Highland Fairview is going to do. So, Sean, um, go ahead and uh, take us uh, down uh, the lane and tell, tell us what we're talking about this week. Well, um Briefly, I want to talk about um, on uh, even Marino Valley community pages. There's still mm-hmm. a lot of hyster- hysteria about uh, Donald Trump running, and right. some of the stuff that they're saying is um, rather absurd. About like how many of these people are uh, racist. Uh, that's uh-huh. it's like it's like anything these people don't like is cons- they 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 label racist and. Um, well, that's the that's the Democrats uh, way of scaring people yeah. to vote for them. Yeah. But to like your your diehard liberal activists, that's like uh, pa- that's like the Pavlov's dogs reaction. But to everyone else, it's turning into like the boy who cried wolf right. or it's like everything's racist. It, it doesn't yeah. mean anything anymore. Right. It doesn't mean anything. And it, it doesn't. I mean, uh, we have a fascist in the. Uh, White House now uh, elect, and when, and when I say fascist, people immediately think about Nazism. No, the definition of fascism is the co- combination of government and business working together. Mm-hmm. And so, when I say that, I'm not trying to say that Trump is a uh, Nazi. I'm trying mm-hmm. to say he's a businessman that is now in control of the government, mm-hmm. and he's going to use his business acumen to make the government work. Uh, well, he's uh, he's declared today that he's going to. Uh Relinquish all control of his uh, business, his businesses, and his business interests. Yeah, because that there was a lot, a lot of liability with that. You know, which yeah. you know, I don't care because it's not going to affect me because I, I can't afford to go into the Trump Tower. Yeah. But uh, but uh, uh, yeah, he was going to have a lot of problems with that. Yeah, so. um, he's looking at uh, Milwaukee County uh, Sheriff uh, David Clark for Homeland Security. Hmm. He's okay. uh, Julia Rudy Giuliani has been considered for a few positions a few now. Positions, yeah. I heard, um, but I heard he wants Secretary of State, but that might go to Romney. What I'm hearing, yeah, they're still in the competition. Yeah, I, I would rather have Giuliani there, okay. uh, honestly. Um, he's picked a uh, former. I can't remember the guy's name off the top of my head. Former Marine Corps Commandant. Oh yeah, I know who you're talking about. I can't remember his name. For uh, uh, Secretary of Defense, and then uh, he picked just recently picked uh, uh, Ben Carson for uh, housing and, and development, urban, mm-hmm. urban development, development. Mm-hmm. which. Uh, a black guy raised in inner city Detroit by a single mother. I think it's pretty good. Someone that understands the situation. Right. Well, you know, I, I would think that he would make Ben Carson become um, Surgeon General. That would be a good area. Yeah, the, I would. Yeah, I would tend to think so, too. But uh, the housing thing would. Well, it, it'll work, too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. It was also considered for education. So, yeah. I mean, the guy's got a lot of skills. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, who else? Oh, uh, Jeff Sessions. Uh, Jeff Sessions, the only thing he's really guilty of is making a badly timed joke. It, right. Um, he he used to be uh, the attorney general, attorney general in Mississippi in, in, or Alabama. Alabama, that's right, Alabama. And uh, in, during his time, he uh, he prosecuted and convicted, and ultimately saw it, uh, a Klansman executed for the, just the, the murder of a. They picked a random black guy to right. try and make a show of strength and. Uh, Sessions saw that uh, this Justice guy was, was done. Yeah, yeah he, he, saw, he saw to it that this guy was executed, and he was ac- executed in 97. Right. You know, and, and to me, you know, I mean, uh, I'm not saying people don't change their spots, but if you really think about it, what has Jeff Sessions done racially mm-hmm. to offend anybody in the last 30 years? I can't think of anything. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I don't know what that's all about. Yeah. So, um, um, the gay, gays are really freaked out about. Uh, about uh, Mike Pence's views. Um, realistically, I see um, nothing major uh, changing. I expect uh, some. Uh, I expect some uh, legal protections to be bolstered. The only thing that's re- I really expect to change is um, the bathrooms will be um, unisex, mm-hmm. either unisex or segregated. Segregated, okay. Uh, to either like single, single. Uh, 
single stall bathrooms or um, back to just men's and right, women's. men's and women's right or or uh, and the other thing is is that you probably not could be uh, if you're gays probably won't be able to sue over uh, wedding cakes and stuff. <laughs> Which I don't. Good point. Good point. But I mean, for the gay community, oh, man. the gay community's money is just as green as anybody else's. Absolutely. So uh, if, I'm sure there's other people that will gladly take your money and make them their. Oh yeah, wedding cakes, well, so. you know, one thing I do know: gay men are gainfully employed. That's mm-hmm. a, that's a fact. So yeah, I mean, hey, I'm not gonna um, hate on that. So yeah, and as far as foreign policy being. Friendly to Israel and being friendly to Putin right now is not such a bad thing. Um, Obama has made a real mess in the Middle East. Uh, no, no, that was Hillary under Obama's one. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Well, uh, basically, the lawfare in Afghanistan, where there's really strict requirements before you can take right. someone out, um, his the quote unquote moderates he's been arming in. Mm-hmm. In Syria, right. basically, they take the the weapons and then go uh, go act as mercenaries for ISIS because right. they pay better. Mm-hmm. Um, and now, uh, and now these now that the moderates were arming have attacked uh, the Russian right. uh, eight, the, the Russian advisors. And um, I'm hearing something about uh, that we've got mercenaries in the Ukraine that we're that we're doing. Some sort of uh, operations on the Russian border, which it, it wouldn't surprise me. I couldn't tell you personally, but mm-hmm. uh, it wouldn't surprise me. But yeah, I mean, like, okay, didn't anyone read? Didn't any of Obama's people in the State Department read about the Cold War? I mean, that's like serious active war there. And so, but now that uh, just it was like yesterday or the other day, Islamic State attacked Israel. Which, mm-hmm. well, if Islam if Islamic State ever does. <laughs> launches a su- su- successful attack against Israel, then other countries are going to get involved in... Right, well, and it'll, it'll... It'll look like... It'll become like an Armaged- Armageddon scenario, so right. it's for the best that, that uh, Trump uh, either helps uh, uh, eliminate ISIS or at least uh, gives Putin the, the green light to do it. Right, right. Uh, just because that situation's uh, getting out of control the way the U.S. has been dealing with it now. Mm. Mm, okay, good, good. So, it's a complicated issue over there, so I just kind of watch and see what happens. Yeah, but so. um, to what I think what people are more concerned about right now is uh, uh, city stuff. Mm-hmm. That's just a lot of stuff going on in the city. Um, well, you know, let, let's talk about the elections in general. Uh, some of the very people that were supposed to win did mm-hmm. not win, and we're not just talking about Myrtle Valley. We're talking about uh, Paris, Denise Fleming's. Super PAC running mate, mm-hmm. uh, the black lady that was running for mayor in Paris. I forgot her name, but her and Denise Fleming were backed by a uh, black family super PAC that mm-hmm. Denise Fleming kept denying. That lady came in dead last in Paris. Denise Fleming herself, Mrs. I'm Denise Fleming! That chick there is now saying, like a lot of us candidates, there's something wrong with those numbers that were counted. And I said that 3,700 3, uh, votes were thrown out or wasn't counted for whatever reasons. Like round filed or are they sitting in a pile somewhere? I think they're sitting in a pile because I think by law they're supposed to hold them for 10 months or something like that after the election or something like that. But um, Well, aren't isn't anyone allowed to go in and take a yes, look at them? Yeah, you absolutely can go and take a look and make a request to go in there and take a look. But um, there's a uh, – I I'm working on it now. There's a uh, little tip that was given to me. Of why um, Victoria Baca and uh, Idiot Gutierrez got the numbers that they have, and the Highland Fairview candidates got the number they have, because mm-hmm. a group known as La Familia something something I can't mm-hmm. I my Piquito Piquito is my Spanish, but um, it's La Familia something was hired and they were put in by a group for the election thing. You know when mm-hmm. they need election officials, whatever. And these people were pre-screened supposedly Mm -hmm. to um, discount votes like Chad's in Florida and stuff like that. Now, and I don't know if there's any fact to that or whatever the deal is, but. Well, considering there's uh, Facebook photos of Victoria Baca's office electioneering, that what you're, what you just said wouldn't surprise me. Right. You know, so, um, 
Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're kind of not I'm not looking in because it's funny things after the election. The um, LaDonna Jimson's people were like, oh, you got to look into this. And it was a travesty. Uh, I came in third. Mm-hmm. So what benefit it, it, uh, would it be of mine to look into that? I mean, not that I haven't doing it because you, you guys, everybody knows. And, I like, well, Jimson, she's a fighter. Yeah, she's she's still on the city council. Why isn't yeah, she doing? Why it? isn't she doing anything? And that and but that goes back to, to what I was telling people. These are all the same people with different faces. Mm-hmm. They they don't care what's going on. I mean, because if Jimson <laughs> really cared about this district, mm-hmm. once it was exposed that she was a bank robber, politically you do not run for office. And you know uh, her people and me get in arguments, and they're saying that it's my fault. But the point is this: she won with seventy percent of the vote two years ago. Where were her friends to vote for her this mm-hmm. time around? And nobody can answer that. Yeah. Because if, th- if those friends had came out, Victoria Baca pretty much got the same exact percentage of numbers. You know, you know I think she was like three or four p- higher. Yeah. Uh, that she always gets. She doesn't mm-hmm. pull over 33, 35% mm-hmm. of any vote. Yeah. And it has to be split. She can't do it by herself one on one. So where was LaDonna Jimson's um, supporters? And, and then. How can this guy, Norberto Perez, who's on the uh, Box Springs Water Company, have as many votes as I have? He didn't even have any signs. Now that is suspicious. You know, um, Mercado, where did he come from? But I happen to know that Roberto uh, Perez was paid by Victoria Baca to run in the election. I happen to know that. That's a fact. And uh, we're going to be exposing that in a little bit. And I want to remind everybody, please check Denise Fleming's uh, 460s and all the candidates' 460s mm-hmm. because you're going to see who their donors are and who they really work yeah. for. So, yeah, and then, then uh, Gutierrez had his victory party at uh, yeah at Ido, at Ido Uncle Ido. house. Right, Uncle Ido. I mean, so... Yeah, and, sugar and, Daddy Ido. <laughs> and it's going to be no secret that when projects come up, mm-hmm. I want you to watch these candidates, how they're going to vote. And wow, Uncle Ito comes up. You know, my, my question to this, Sean, when are the citizens who pay these taxes and pay, pays this money, when are they going to do something for us? Yukaipa just now ground broke a civic center for the citizens of Yukaipa, and they are a lot younger than we are. We yeah. have no civic center. So yeah. what, what, what are they going to do for us? Uh Whatever Ito tells them to do for us. Which is nothing. Yeah. If there's any uh, surplus for uh, for libraries, I mean, history has already shown that's going On to Nason the Street, east side yeah, infrastructure. East side infrastructure right. um, if there's any money for anything else, it's going to the east side for inter- infrastructure. Um, if, you're, uh, if there's law enforcement, uh, avail- law enforcement resources available... They're not going to Edgemont. They're going to the east side. Uh, um, they're going to have – Edo is going to have the most uh, 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 secure piece of uh, empty property, sort of a military base. Right, exactly. And then um, you know he needs an infrastructure bond to start putting in the water pipes and the sewage out there. Mm-hmm. So he's got a super majority. We can do that. Um, again, this goes back to – these uh, elected officials, you know, and I know hindsight's twenty twenty, but I really wish George Price would have kept his seat because mm-hmm. he would have been reelected there. But we have to now get behind um, Dave Marquez. Yes, definitely. And uh, and stay behind him because now he is by himself. Yeah. And it's going to look ugly. Yeah. And the other four people and the other four people are just going to flat sack the city for Edo. Right. And just and just and just rob us blind. So it's going to be a, a very bad, sad day. But this goes to show you what I've been saying about Ladonna Jimson and these people all along. If Ladonna Jimson legitimately cared about this city mm-hmm. and her district, she would have stepped down and got behind myself or somebody else. Mm-hmm. And I would have got it behind somebody else. But really, we didn't have too too much of a choice. If you were if you're a mm-hmm. anti Edo candidate or anti Victoria Baca, yeah, and. Um, it would have been a better showing, I think. But again, she was just thinking about yeah. herself. So that and the, the sad, also the sad thing about the dumping all the money into the east side is that there the market for the warehouses are going to they're fall drying out up from under right because with Trump in the coming into the White House, there's going to be more of a protectionist eco- economic policy to where we're going to be making stuff here more than right. the, importing cheap crap as much cheap crap from China. China. So I mean, there's not going to be as much. Uh, Demand for warehouses 
pull, yeah. holding stuff that's coming in from the ports. If, right. If anything, there might be some some market for existing warehouses to store mm-hmm. stuff for for export, but um, realistically, a lot of the, the manufacturing industries and a lot of that stuff's there's going to be a significant increase in the amount of stuff that's done locally, so you don't right. need these international well, logistics again, things. Well, they, again, they've done, ever since those canals have opened up, excuse me, um, ever since the canals have opened up in the Panama Canal, they're not talking about, uh, they're up to 13% reduction of products coming to the West Coast, excuse me, I'm catching a cold, uh, coming to the West Coast. And it's going to get bigger and bigger as these people decide to take logistically to go around mm-hmm. the United States. Mm-hmm. To the and go directly to the ports rather than drop off here in the West Coast mm-hmm. and put it on a truck. And they're not talking about that mm-hmm. either because you can see the demand. And I'm going to say there's a warehouse right down the street. Mm-hmm. It's built three or four years ago, still hasn't been used. Yeah. And they, they just keep building these warehouses. And they, you know, and mm-hmm. people are going to say, "Well, look at the 215. They're building warehouses. Uh, Riverside's building warehouses. That's exactly where they're supposed to be. Exactly. Stop talking about Riverside. We're talking about what's best for Moreno Valley." Mm-hmm. So all you people that, oh, we're jealous of Riverside or Riverside's jealous of us, stop talking about Riverside and start doing for the city. So, but they're building well, That's just like the communist propaganda again. It's where your enemies are all around us. Right. Exactly. Uh, um, exactly. Yeah, just... And then also, uh, if, the, if the environmental activists ever realize that... Uh, the not in my backyard approach is making mm-hmm. the, all their cre- clean green technologies mm-hmm. worse than mm-hmm. worse than just keeping the stuff they have in good condition. I mean, yeah, it looks all clean. It's all good green technology over mm-hmm. here, mm-hmm. but over there, they're just like it's it's they're ma- it's like they're making a apoc- apoc- apocalyptic wasteland of uh, the environment over there to make these things that are all green and clean for right. us over here, and, right? So if they're really so concerned about carbon emissions and pollution and stuff, mm-hmm. we, we would be better off making that here. And um, well, hopefully... Uh, and make the most of it. Just yeah, hopefully some of them would actually see that right. and and make the cre- clean, green technologies under our environmental laws mm-hmm. as opposed to China's. Right, absolutely. Now, um, last night at the city council meeting, they brought up oh. a measure... To disclose, voluntarily disclose um, campaign contributions. Yes. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that, and what do you think? I think that uh, it sounds good, but the measure had no teeth to it. It's just like, I mean, last time they discussed anti-corruption measure, uh, they had to. What they were doing was Gaiba in. Uh, uh, Jimson. Jimson were mm-hmm. working in secret to avoid the Brown Act, which mm-hmm. is like, okay, serious, you're missing the point here. Right. You're working on it. You're it's, in you're, secret. <laughs> yeah, you're circumventing the anti-corruption acts to work on an anti-corruption ordinance. Right. Uh, is this like Twilight Zone or Alice in Wonderland? No, no, or? it's not the Twilight Zone. It's Marina Valley. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, and so, but now the next ordinance we've got coming has no teeth to it. Right. Uh, so it's like, yeah, they could, they can. They can go on live news TV and mm-hmm. like Channel Seven or whatever, and say, uh, "Yeah, I'm doing all this. I'm, right. I've got all these conflicts, and there's still nothing they yeah, going to happen." Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, nothing's going to happen to me, whatever the deal is. So yeah, um, and uh, just it's amazing how bold these people are, and that they don't fear prosecution at all. Well, why why should you fear prosecution? Ito gives to everybody. He gave to Mike Hestron and. Uh, um, he didn't give to me, unfortunately. I don't know why. And um, mm-hmm. by the way, uh, Uncle um, Uncle Ito did uh, text me and wish me a happy Thanksgiving, and I appreciate that, mm-hmm. Mr. Ito, if you're listening. And uh, those at Highland Fairview, happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy mm-hmm. holidays. We really miss you over here. I mean, give us something to talk about over here because you mm-hmm. guys have been kind of quiet. You're making me nervous. But um, yeah, but you know, uh, as somebody who's been watching this, if mm-hmm. I don't understand how, you know, okay, you get elected during a recall. And you see the corruption that was happening at the city at that time. Mm-hmm. And then you get up there and you do absolutely nothing about getting this measure. Not saying it was going to pass, but they should have been talking about that every meeting mm-hmm. about getting this measure passed. Why is it that when Jimson and um, Price are heading out the door 
and I'm not trying to slam anybody. I'm just stating, the, you know, the facts of the matter is, mm-hmm. you know, they're heading out the door. They bring this up and it has no teeth. In two years, they could have put teeth in it, is what I'm saying, you know, and worked on it, you know, really well and to get in. But, you know, now you're going to bring this up to make everybody feel good yeah. and it's not going to change anything. So, yeah, now at the last second, they're also working on the library funding again. Oh, yeah. Well, you got to put your name to something. You want to show everybody you were a councilman here. Yeah. You know, you got to say, hey, you know, 19. Yeah, it would have been nice if they had done that, like, uh, I don't know, five years ago right. the, when they had. The funds. Yeah, when they had the funds in place and actually had everything set up to use the funds for what they were meant to be used for and right. didn't get investigated for the, by the IRS for. Right, right. Well, you know. Diverting them. That, that's the other thing that's so amazing is that uh, malfeasance in office is a very serious crime and one that does not have a, a statute of limitations. So you can get prosecuted right. for that for the rest of your life. I mean, right. that's a very serious thing. And they don't seem to care in the least. In the least. I mean. <laughs> but but it's up to the citizens. I mean, we got to hold their feet to the fire and, and yeah. we refuse to do that. But Now that they're talking about the library again, I honestly cannot uh, support uh, giving, putting any, adi- make, uh, raising any additional uh, funds by new methods because I, honestly, the city has a track record of misusing any any funds. Any funds. It goes into us. Those funds always end up in some sort of slush fund and always end up into someone's well, pet project. You know, and speaking of which, Measure L passed. And uh, we're going to see uh, how that, you know, they're going to put that money in the general fund and it's not going to go to the yeah. police. It's not going to go to anything. It's going to go to Edo's project over mm-hmm. in um, district or the east side of the city. Uh, I mean, we have so many things going, but uh, this is the perfect city. And I could see why Edo keeps other developers out because we are so stupid here that they don't even hide it anymore. They just throw it in, your, in our faces mm-hmm. and say, I, we dare you to do something about it. And, um, and they hope that people get tired enough to just go away and not do anything about it. And uh, I'm not going anywhere. So, uh, But the good thing is uh, they're going to slurry my street. Cool. In, in a couple of weeks. So it only took them two years to get it done after me complaining. And by the yeah. way, LaDonna Jimson sent me an email, really nasty mm-hmm. email. And she said, since I don't do anything, and she was referring to the slumlords that mm-hmm. I told her about. Mm-hmm. And to get this done, get that done, get this done. Mm-hmm. And, then, and, and as she's on her way out, mad at me mm-hmm. uh, for the idea that I gave her, uh, mm-hmm. that's, that's a positive idea. She's mad at me on her way out, yeah. like it's my fault that she didn't. It, if LaDonna, if you're listening to this and I'm going to talk to you as a man and as a friend, if you were actually doing your job and you had got that seat in the right way, we wouldn't even be talking about a Victoria Baca return on the seat and you would still be the council person today. Mm-hmm. So the only person you have to blame is yourself. Mm-hmm. I mean, me running, I, all I did was give people a choice and they didn't choose me. So, which is kind of unfortunate because now who's going to get things done in this district? Because Victoria <laughs> Baca isn't going to do it. Yeah. So, um, you know, so. Yeah. And um, it's just frustrating. I didn't want to be talking about uh, the World Logistics Center right now. I wanted to be talking about uh, homelessness. Uh, mental health, um, substance abuse, um, after school services, mm-hmm. um, uh, daycare. So, uh, single moms and parents or even low income families. Do you think can that work. the Highland Fairview city council really is going to do anything about any of that? Because no, to me, and that's why I'm so pissed about mm-hmm. it because I was hoping to do, that we would be dealing with that right. more and not the moving arguing about warehouses. Right. Again. Moving into a positive direction for, for the citizens rather than. Yeah. And like I've mentioned before, we could have used um, like a community center with a pool. That would be, having right. access to an indoor pool all year round would be amazing, mm-hmm. especially for people with um, that could use the water for ex- exercise, for right. low impact mobility. exercise. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, or just. I, well, you know, here, here's the sad thing: a lot of people don't. They don't even talk about this. There is a quiet exodus of money and people who have been citizens here for a long time Mm -hmm. on the east side. They're leaving. Yeah. Up in Box Springs, they're leaving. And these are the people who came here years ago 
for the open doors and the uh, serenity of what Moreno Valley was. That's why my parents came here, and that's and part a, of the reason why I stuck around. Right, and right. I, that's why I came back, because, I mean, there's no other dynamic like this. I mean, look, look how cold it is and the snow in the mountains and, mm-hmm. you know— I mean, it's 103 in the summertime, and you come now, you got to, you know, it's so cold at night and things like that. But, yeah. Uh, but nobody's talking about that quiet exodus as people are leaving. And now that this election has happened, mm-hmm. more people are putting their homes up for sale. And, um, you know, what do you do? How do you, how do you replace the, that lost monetary uh, value because it seems to me that that it's a repeat of what happened in Detroit. Right. It seems to me the only people that are coming in are people who don't have that disposable income. Yeah. To replace the people that yeah. have the disposable income. Yeah. All the, the all the people with uh, all your all your middle class and most of your upper class people in Detroit they got sick of what was going on and they left and the only people who were left uh, didn't are have the people the, who couldn't they, leave. Yeah, they couldn't leave and they couldn't provide a sufficient tax base to. Provide for the city's uh, needs, to run the city couldn't, right. r- or couldn't run the infrastructure. So mm-hmm. Detroit, off it looks more like in some places more like Chernobyl, Chernobyl or Beirut, uh, 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 Beirut or Iraq, I, and the- yeah, Aleppo, or <laughs> right. even some places more like Hiroshima, <laughs> right, right. But uh, and uh, <coughs> just and just the way we're working it, it's like they were talking about they want us to be like the new Riverside, but we've got the politics of. We're the for politics, we're the new Chicago. For infra- infrastructure, we're the new Detroit, and for economy, we're the new San Bernardino. It's right, right. They they talk about all these grand plans, but in reality, we've got the worst of talk. everything. Yeah, it's just talk, and you know, and you know, really, you're starting, you're really starting to, to depress me because you know, thinking about that is really depressing. I, it makes me yeah. want to put up a sign and sell and get the hell out of here myself. Yeah. And the only reason I'm not selling is my house is paid for, so that would be kind of dumb to yeah. to do so. But um, uh, your your buddy Brian Lowell didn't win, which was yeah uh, a I I think he was surprised. I mean, but he still yeah. got his job on the planning commission, so yeah. he, he still has a revenue for Edo. And I believe at the end of the day, at the I haven't checked the four sixty, but uh, last was reported he received fifteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars from Highland Fairview, even though he denied, denied, denied. Yeah, he was it's a Highland public Fairview. record now. Right, he was a Highland Fairview received any contributions. Uh, he would have probably been fairly good at the job too if he didn't right. uh, suck up to Edo, Edo, and stuff like that. And um, I guess uh, what's his name, David Terralaz, he received money from Highland Fairview. I mean, these were all put people put in there to vote to vote split and do what mm-hmm. they have to do. Um, so. We're in dire straits, in my opinion, Mm -hmm. as we go forward. And what we need to do is stop all this infighting. Now, uh, LaDonna and me, you know, we have our differences and disagreements. But if somebody had came to me and said, this is our plan, this is what we want to do. Running, it's almost like the uh, DNC and Hillary Clinton. Yeah. In District 1 situation, you ran a candidate, Radine Ayers, that had no chance of winning because of her background. But you won't get behind a candidate like myself who is new, who's mm-hmm. actually from here, has a decent background and has a yeah. good chance of winning. Mm-hmm. You didn't want to get behind that person and keeping the seat. Now it's gone. And that's what we yeah, got to start I, doing. It's yeah, just so depressing. I, I, the, the Riverside Democratic Central Committee just... It's, yeah. it's, 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 it's a joke. Yeah, it's like for one thing, was it... When they came up with their name, was it like a contest to see who could uh, come up with the most overtly communist name possible? Right. But also, it's like these aren't. Even if I don't agree with them, these people, the people in that that are that are involved in that, just are not the best and brightest. Right. But did you notice that a lot of the Democratic candidates that these people backed lost? Mm -hmm. They lost. And not like by unless they a were votes. unless they were uh, on High, Highland Fairview's payroll, right? Right, but that's what I'm saying. It, it's like it's just to me. It's like on the national level, of DNC. You have to start reaching out to newer mm-hmm. blood. You can't keep relying mm-hmm. on Grandma Jimson to be the face of change. That's not change. And like I've been I've been saying for two mm-hmm. years, you can't keep a, the, all these people know each other. It's the same person with a different face, and that's why we lost over here. Yeah. You know, and, and Raiden Ayers, uh, I only heard about her recently because yeah. uh, I've gotten into it with her on Facebook a few yeah. times, and I thought she was just some, um, I thought she was just some college kid 
based on the way she was. On oh show. yeah, no, no. She she's a old lady who uh, likes to hang out with her uh, younger daughter, and she's a feminist, and um, you know she just thinks she knows everything, and she's yeah, a shot caller. I, yeah, I, I didn't see a picture of her till like last night or something. Yeah, and she's old. Up lady. until there, I, the, just the way, just from her writing style, I thought she was. Oh yeah, maybe no, like twenty. No. She likes uh, music that you know that. I mean, you know, she's into the new music, you know, whatever the young stuff is. I mean, it's stuff that I wouldn't even listen to because my kids listen to it. But she's one of these ladies that are trying to uh, – she's a feminist, number one. She's yeah. all about women empowerment. And don't get me wrong. I, I'm not for women empowerment because I'm a man. That would mm-hmm. be stupid by definition. But um, she's one of these people that doesn't act her age, basically. You know, so, she, you know, basically she, she wants to be on the uh, bad girls club. And things like that, even though she's like 60 or 70 years old. But again, but uh, she's also wants to be a shot caller in Moreno Valley Mm -hmm. and she's losing and losing badly. And she's the leader, even though she says she's not because her daughter ran for school board and lost badly. Mm -hmm. But the only reason her daughter uh, ran is because money could be funneled to Mm -hmm. her daughter in support of her candidacy. And that's why they do that. This is all about money. I mean, Highland Fairview, the Democratic Party of Moreno Valley. Uh, the United Democrats. I mean, this is all the same group of people, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like they don't know when to leave and they're losing badly. That's all I got to say. They are losing badly. I'm not even a Republican yeah. and they're losing badly. So, yeah, usually when that happens, uh, most parties like go back. Retool. And, yeah, they go back to the drawing board and uh, uh, redraw their uh, platform. <clears throat> right. Right. Not not here. Not Moreno Valley, because like I said, we shoot ourselves in the foot. We can't stay organized. Mm-hmm. We can't uh, do anything because because we're so selfish mm-hmm. within ourselves, you know. So, um, and I, I know everybody says that I'm selfish, but I don't see anybody else informing other residents after mm-hmm. the election or even before the election. Oh, that's right, that was me doing yeah. that. So that's where we're at. Yeah, um, some people in in, rep, in especially in represent us uh, have suggested becoming a charter city, but. A charter city for what to do the same things over and over again <coughs> exactly personally i'm thinking it would be better just to to uh go back to the county dis- yeah dissolve the city and go, go back, back to, to being county. Uh, right. a county right right i mean when i was a kid here hey when we were part of the county that was a great way to live i mean it was we didn't have what we're having now <coughs> so um i mean we have a lot of problems here but uh what i want to do as the listeners are listening uh, please like and share this and get these younger people involved in these politics. If you are tired of what is going on, it doesn't matter if you're a Republican, a Democrat at this level, at the local level, mm-hmm. it's nonpartisan. OK, yeah. it, I don't, it doesn't matter what if you want to change and get some of these old geezers mm-hmm. from the 60s out of our politics that have no ideas. Mm-hmm. We, we, we got to come together. And for the young people, uh, take time to go talk to some of the other young people that have have jobs or used to have jobs in the warehouses. Uh, you you uh, won't be happy with what you hear. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I did. Did you see that sign on the two fifteen where there, I mean Amazon is begging for seasonal workers? Nobody. These young people do not want to work in those warehouses. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's sad. I mean, it's. I mean, what do you do? Yeah. Well, I I know someone that used to work there and would have gladly kept that job if they wouldn't have just dumped him after three months. Right. Yeah. He came close to the ninety days and they said, "Oh, you got to go." And then he. Yeah, so if they're if they're having that much trouble finding uh, work, then they must have they must be pretty close to burning out everyone that could right. uh, that's available to work <laughs> in those jobs. Well, the thing is, uh, maybe if we uh, start making some more low income, oh, affordable housing, because mm-hmm. you got to have housing for your slaves. So yeah. if we start maybe building that, maybe then we can get some people. To yeah, work but then the only the only. Uh, <clears throat> Service jobs that uh, those will support is like maybe a McDonald's, a Taco Bell, or a Little Caesars Pizza, a, a dollar store, a liquor <laughs> store, maybe a marijuana dispensary. Now it's wait, wait, wait. You don't expect these people who work in the warehouses to actually be able to buy a house and live a nice no, life. That's what I'm saying. They're going to be living some uh, Section Eight apartment, mm-hmm. and the only uh, only uh, <clears throat> services that they're going to be able to afford are the are the Cheapest of the cheapest. cheapest, and that's what we got here, and and more to come. And, and what what kills me is when I, I listen to city council, and they're happy that another ninety nine cent store is coming to the city. That pisses that's me pathetic. off. You know, is that's the best you can do for us? 
Yeah, really? and also, why are so many 99-cent stores coming and going? I mean, if you can't keep the 99-cent stores in business, I mean, there's right. something really wrong with we, your city's economy. We have a we have a problem here. And, uh, you know, be, before I forget, I also want to talk about, now that Victoria Baca is back, the animal shelter. And uh, there's a lady named Laura Maderas. Mm-hmm. She has a uh, her own um, podcast show. That with her ideas, and she was the one that was behind a lot of the positive things yeah. in the animal shelter. So I want to remind people, please go to her webpage yeah. and listen to her podcast, and she also comes on our yeah, show. Yeah, sometimes we that, post her stuff, yeah, her on, stuff the on there. And I think you need to know what's going on, and I encourage you guys mm-hmm. uh, to really get behind that, because yeah. these animals have no voice. And uh, that's another thing. Uh, what did uh, Victoria <laughs> Baca do for the animal shelter when she was... Uh, on the on the city council the in the past, time? basically she's going to do the same thing now. Right. Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing, or uh, speed up the rate of uh, euthanasia. So, uh, yeah. you know, maybe if uh, Highland Fair you suddenly wants lots and lots of puppies and kittens, then right to ship out, be done. Yeah, right. you know, and so um, you know, it, it's very it's very depressing because if somebody doesn't work out, it's it, it, it's it's like a breakup. You know, uh, so those of us that have been married or had girlfriends and stuff like that. You know, you've been married to this person for 15 years and you break up. You don't go back and marry that person unless it's like some some circumstances that was like you didn't know. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we just keep dragging these skeletons back up. I mean, you mean to tell me, Moreno Valley, there was no other candidate that, okay, we tried Baca the first time. She didn't work. We tried Jimson. She didn't work. She didn't know what she was doing. You didn't want me. That's fine. You had to go back to Baca again. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know people in every district that would have been good for the job. Right, right. I mean, if you don't want to pick me, that's fine. I, I don't have a problem with that. But you don't go back to the past to pick some. It, it, it's just like the Hillary thing. You don't pick a, somebody who thirty years ago we, we, we've done that. The Bushes. That's why the Bushes mm-hmm. didn't win. People are tired of the same old people. Mm-hmm. There's got to be other people we could run. You know, and that's the sad thing. And I, I'm going to get everybody to think about for District 1. There's a guy, he was in the race this year. He kind of endorsed me, but he's a young guy, got a lot of great ideas. His name is Edgar Garcia. Keep that name in mind. And another guy is Jaime Moreno, who is in, with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Mm-hmm. He's another guy to, to start looking at as as we move forward. But uh, we got about uh, two and a half minutes to go. So, Sean, uh, what else is on your mind? Just real quick. Um. I don't know. There's a lot of things you have to like stop and yeah, stop and go through. Well, yeah, there's just so much to think about lately. Right, right. I mean, um, are, are you going to uh, uh, your Bible study later on? Or yes, okay, I'm doing okay. that tonight. Okay, um, good. If any, I would because if anything, we we can go a second hour if you if you have time. But if you don't, no, I'll be able to do that uh, in, in a couple of weeks. But, okay, great, great. Uh, yeah, for now, I've still got the the Bible study. Okay, great, but great. How, how's that going? By it's, the way? it's going great. Um, I prefer not to talk publicly about uh, yeah, what I'm should. doing because yeah. um, I, I, I'm not going to brag about it. But, yeah. uh, but it's I'm, positive and everything's good. Yeah, it's positive and uh, it's something I'm going to need to do to center myself and keep perspective on life, especially when I'm getting mixed up in the insanity of city <laughs> politics. No, no, Moreno Valley politics. That's the whole thing. Yeah, because I, I kid you not, when I go to city council meetings, I have the most bizarre dreams that I can't even possibly explain <laughs> that night. <laughs> Right, right. And speaking of uh, bizarre dreams and what's going on in the city, uh, Melissa Martinez, she has uh, her outreach uh, Mm -hmm. thing that's happening and she's going to be announcing some things that she's going to be doing for the holidays, which is very important. That's exactly the kind of thing I would rather be talking about than the World Logistics Center. Center. Right. I mean, like I said, if you're here in 25 years, supposedly the World Logistics Center will be built and everything will be hunky-dory and it'll be a great thing, but I doubt... Anybody listening to this will be here in 25 years, so yeah. that's where we're at with that. But um, it's the holiday season, and uh, we're we're going to be doing this. We're you know we're back. We haven't gone anywhere. We're retooling. Uh, Sean's got a lot to say. He's got a lot of notes. Mm-hmm. And by the way, Sean, my lawyer friend, uh, looked through the thing, and she did find some things from Hester. And I'm going to tell you about that. Okay. In a bit. And um, you know we're on the case, so please like and share. Sean's got his own thing. He's going to have his own little podcast as soon as he gets his uh, schedule down and we're we are not going anywhere we are just gearing up so the information is out there if you want it please look for it but in, in closing sean anything else you got going or uh nope oh well just uh, the holiday shopping's coming up 
And as much as the city could use the money, don't get yourself in trouble. And don't get yourself in debt. Yeah, don't get yourself in debt. It's live within your means. You'll be happier later. Absolutely. This is the Hot Seat Radio Show. Sean Fortine and Donovan Sadiq. We are just getting started. Please like and share, and we will be back again next week, if not sooner. So if you guys got any news, any information, you got something you want to say, please contact us and come on the show. Pastor Don, uh, Mighty Max, Daryl Terrell, we are all here. 